Hello viewers, we're jumping into a super interesting daily race C for this week. One where we have 10 different cars on offer and it's a trial mountain. Now out of all of these cars, it seems that the BMW is the go-to car, which is why I'm going to be choosing the Porsche. And after giving it a solid six laps, it does indeed turn out that this car is off the pace. A low 203 where I really need to be in the low 202s. The hoodie is coming off, guys. The hoodie is coming off. All right. I think I'm going to get spanked by all these BMWs, but let's see what happens. So, yeah, starting 10th on the grid. Now, the key reason why this race is so interesting is because of the custom slipstream setting. But also because of this epic maneuver at the beginning. Look at this. I fake this guy to the inside, hold him to the left as long as possible, and he forgets his turning in point, sailing off into barrier and it's only been turn one and we've already got a wall visit so very nice but that was about as good as it got for me really as you can see the guys in front began to pull away i did have the assistance here of calster and will murdoch so two pretty good players to be boosting you along the back straight so i thought you know what we've got some handy help for some top players here perhaps we can get back on track with trying to catch back up with these guys but that was not to be the case um, by this point, most people were very, very quick in this race, and I was um, lagging behind a bit, it must be said, especially in what is not the go-to car for this race. And as you can see, I was comfortably being dropped by the BMWs and the Alex uh, Lexus LFA there, driven by Calster. And so, once again, the balancing job by Polyphony not coming up um, with, well, a good balance. The BMW is clearly the best car. We've got a Diablo in front of us now. Going into the first corner, you can see the almighty gulf. Um, not a VW gulf, I mean a gap between my group and the group in front. We were just pulling, or getting, um, getting dropped. And so we just found ourselves in our own little battle. It was actually quite tragic. I was down in 15th. It was just a horror show, really. It was just not pretty, um, apart from those two guys smashing each other off. There wasn't much to shout home about. Eventually finishing in a very lonely and distant 13th. Okay, so it turns out the Porsche is not the one. We're going to change that by jumping over to the BMW. This is clearly the car to use, but let's try and set a quicker time. And so after jumping into a good five laps, I was not able to set a quicker time than I did in the Porsche, which is kind of weird because it is a better car for this track. So with no time left before the race, I jumped into the race. This time starting 12th on the grid, hoping that I would not get embroiled in a massive battle which would inevitably slow us down. So the slipstream is strong and this does have a couple of different effects. Now, of course, it brings the pack closer together. You can hang with people who are quicker than you. But what also happens is you kind of get clustered into groups and it can be very messy indeed so if you've played this race this week you'll see what i mean it's, it's just very clustery if that's a word which it isn't but it now is if you know what i mean and so what you really need in this kind of race is a lot of cooperation and teamwork which is something that we wasn't really getting and i would lay the blame at this italian driver here um, easy to do, you know, easy to do just to blame some other guy. Anyway, here, right, um, I was trying to boost Turismo second, who I know is a very quick guy, so I thought, okay, let's utilise the pace of the quick guy to try to catch up with the group in front, who by this point were a long way ahead. Going into here, I mean, we can we can just pause it there for a moment. Just, just take a look at that radar, because that really summarises this race and that corner. I mean, this corner here is pretty much where things really kick off. The Italian there, I was quite right to blame him as he runs me wired into the wall. And look at this, it's, it's just not pretty at all. The, the group out in front pulling away and we're just back here, mired in a battle for 10th. This was the final lap now and it, it really didn't get much better for me. As uh, we cut the corner by, I'd say two pixels based on experience there. Might have been three, but um, you tell me in the comments. And this meant, therefore, that I would lose a couple of positions on the line. Once again, a tragic 13th position. 
Now, the reason why this race is so crazy is because of this slipstream strength custom, which brings everyone very close together, except for when we start crashing into each other. Now, I desperately need to improve my qualifying time and my general pace because I am way too slow. So I kind of deduced that I need to be starting towards the front because you're at the mercy of other people if you start too close to the back. I mean, if you're just good at the game, you know, I've seen Will Murdoch go from the back to the front. So it is possible. But with my ability level, which isn't that of World Tour player Will Murdoch, then you do need to start a bit further forward. This is Maraglino with the fastest lap in the world at the time of recording. Very smooth, very elegant. And here was my attempt to try to recreate that. Setting, by this point, a low 202, which is kind of the area which I wanted to be in. If not, into the 201s, the fastest time in the world was a low 201. And so I was in that rough ballpark of one second away from the top time in the world, which is where I roughly tend to find myself. Now here, of course, racing up against the Ghost, the Ghost being the 202.158, trying to chip away a couple of tenths. And there's a lot of speed to be carried in a lot of these corners in this middle sector, c committing really early over this curb. And then you don't really want to go out to the left too much on the exit, coming back to the right. This left hand is super important as it leads out onto the longest straight in the game. Uh, in the game? In, in the track. What am I talking about? There are many um, straights longer than this one. Breaking just before the hazard sign on the right hand side. And really looking for the apex just after the big rock on the left. Getting the power down nicely. We are a tenth and a half up through the second split. And so this could be... A 201. We could scrape it if we can pull off a tidy final sector down the hill over to the right hand side, open up this corner as much as possible using the, the yellow on the inside, third gear on the exit, trying to keep the car from snapping away on power. Down into the final chicane, then quite difficult to judge the braking point, but it's kind of where the track just flattens out. And then trying to get a nice exit in third gear through the final part of the lap. And it is going to be extremely close. We're going to fall just short of a 201. I'm quite annoyed that's not a 201, but I'm going to take it. Okay, guys, here we go. Pole position. This is where the fun really starts. And so starting pole position, the race dynamic here is going to be extremely different. Starting at the front compared to mid-pack or towards the back. So the slipstream, of course, when you're behind, it really does benefit you. You use it as much as you can to try to keep up or catch up with the cars in front. But now the tables have turned and physics are now working against me. This custom slipstream is it's debatable as to whether or not this is a very cool race or actually a bit artificial. You tell me in the comments what you think. I... I think it's a slightly overrated race. It is very fun, but I do think that it would be great if there's more car variety for a start. Also, if the racing was a bit less artificial, strong slipstream, it's, it's good and bad. There's definitely different ways of interpreting it. Anyway, on to the back straight, which is not the longest one in the game or the world or the universe, just the longest one on this track. We are going to head hurtling towards this uh, turn nine. Now, the Frenchman there with the big boost from behind, that's very welcome indeed. And I'm pretty much realising by this point that it's almost impossible to pull away. Uh, again, if you're just really good at the game, um, then it's no problem at all. So it really is a bit of a skill issue on my part, I would say. Perhaps the phrase get good comes to mind right now. I'm doing my best, guys. I'm in the lead, okay? Um, so I'm, uh, all I can do is just try to preserve that lead. Maybe try and pull away. And that looks like it might be happening here as the Greek driver and the Frenchman have a bit of a tussle in the chicane there. Now, I'm not sure if France and Turkey have ever had a war. Maybe they had uh, back a couple hundred years ago. French Empire versus the Ottoman Empire. But either way, that's being recreated now in the form of battling down the main straight at Trial Mountain. In fact, they are really going at it, if you can see those pixels back there on the screen. They're turning across each other on a straight line. It really is not pretty at all. 
But either way, I managed to pull away. This is lap four, pushing a little bit too hard and garnering myself a 0.5 second penalty. The steward not looking upon that one too kindly. I managed to keep the Greek driver at bay by about one and a half seconds for these uh, first four laps. However, with that sec uh, half a second penalty being served there, losing crucial momentum and now introducing the Greekman back into the race. And I, I went defensive here into turn one, beginning of lap five, still three laps to go. I was hoping that this would be a somewhat stress-free race where I could kind of just sail away into the distance and win easily. However, with that mistake, I am now very much embroiled in a very direct battle with the Greek driver. So this was not going to be easy to win. I would very much be tested from here to the end. And this is the difficulty in this race. In the lead, you are continuously tested on this back straight. Given its length and given the strength of the slipstream, the physics are very much not in your favour. And so look at this. The Greek driver there, easily able to sail by with many more miles an hour than I had. We're going to try and be aggressive here and retake the position immediately. Back up the inside, forcing the issue. Not spending any time longer than we need to in second place. Retaking the initiative here and moving back into the lead. Just to really establish some form of dominance in this race. Trying to spend as many laps in the lead as possible. As we then hurtle down the hill for the sixth time out of seven. So quite a short race, you could say this one. Just shy of 15 minutes in total. But that is many minutes which are spent under pressure and trying to defend from this guy who will do everything to take this lead away from me. Now this is not an ideal kind of gap here as he can get a significant slingshot down this back straight which seems to go on forever and um, you know what I've changed my mind it is the longest uh, straight in the world in the universe. And we're going to be extremely aggressive here kind of an attempted repeat at my heroics on lap 5 although that time I must say, cleanliness could have been uh, at a higher rate than it was. A bit of contact involved and a bit forceful. And some would say karma here as we head down the hill. And you know what's about to happen, don't you? We're going to cut the corner by... I reckon that was four pixels that time around. And unfortunately, the stewards here are extremely strict. They do not mess about at Tri Mountain. And so this pretty much seals my fate as we round out the final chicane for the seventh and final time. I am not going to serve the penalty, but I will have one second of time added on to the race, meaning I finish in a disappointing second place. Genuinely can't believe that. What an epic fail that was. Okay, viewers, it is now pretty much two days later, and I've waited until half midnight. Surely now I can get a good result. Can I finally do a race without messing up? That is the big question. The big question that everyone is asking. Can Super GT finish a race without being so stupid as to get a penalty on the final lap? Now, my strategy here was wait until midnight, or wait until past midnight, Let's say half past midnight and hopefully by this point most good players will have logged off and gone to sleep and so this is how you can rack up potentially easier wins although that could be very insulting to the people who are in this lobby and would very much disagree with my analysis there and they're going to do everything to stop me from getting this supposed easier win now, again, this first lap is really about the strategy of trying to bridge that gap, trying to edge out clear of at least over a second. You see, yeah, I'm over, I'm about three quarters of a second in front and I'm still trying to break the toe. I think you even get slipstream benefit from 1.5 seconds behind. So the slipstream is very potent, it's very strong and the range at which it is effective is quite big as well. And so definitely not easy race to lead and to try to pull away again skill issue get good mate but you can see here uh, the italian and the and the brit very close indeed and so this is going to be 
a very close fought race there's no question about that um, I did my best there to try to pull away I was eight tenths clear at one point but unless you can get well over a second it's going to be very difficult to establish a proper and meaningful gap so down towards the final chicane here about three quarters uh, sorry three tenths of a second in front so just taking the normal line no need to defend at this point a little bit too early and a little bit far away from the car behind so there's no need to defend fresh air at this point we are however pulling away from fourth fifth and sixth and further back so i'm going to try and pull this into a three horse race rather than a four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen car race ideally so we've narrowed it down to three people now who can potentially win this one and the italian's going for it around the outside he's got the momentum there's not much i can do about that other than punt him off we have a bit of contact there perhaps over slowed the car but all is well in the world as we continue no penalties have been dished out this is lap number three now i decide let's try and turn this into a two horse race try try to give him the bump draft down the main straight as i noticed that mcspongy behind in third was just dropping off slightly however my strategy didn't really work mcspongy was immediately back on back on us he had a very good and very strong sector one now it seems as though the italian was going very slow here i don't know if this was a bit nervous of being in the lead or deliberately slowing me down to try to back me into the pack behind or what it was i don't know but it was quite a slow lap here so as you can see i was pretty much right on his bumper the entire time and therefore this was going to be an extremely close fought straight right here on lap three as we pull out to the right hand side the slipstream definitely working effectively near enough three abreast there for a split second now it's between myself and mcspongy down the straight looking for our breaking point we're both going to sail quite deep here i think maybe not still get on the inside and take the lead of the race once again i'm back to where i need to be this is lap number four coming up down the main straight once again and having to go defensive this is going to be a extremely close race uh, near enough three abreast once more as we take the racing line as i slot in just in front of the pair of them and as you can probably get the vague idea here this is going to be an extremely close race there's just no chance of pulling away it's just extremely difficult on this race there's just nothing you can really do so it's interesting what polyphony have done here with this custom slipstream um again let me know your thoughts on it because it's good and bad i think um i do think the race is slightly overrated as i said but um it is still fun nevertheless and i'm seeking a first win here in this category the good old m3 at trial mountain i mean there are nine other cars you can choose but they're basically pointless other than maybe the lfa um now here I'm trying to break the toe and i actually drive into the wall which was quite moronic I was about eight or nine tenths in front there ending the straight two tenths in front so i've just lost seven tenths of a second in one straight um, which is not helpful but speaking of seven we're on lap seven of seven and this is it then guys this is the big moment this is the big final crescendo of the race of the video can i win this race that is the big question and as we hurtle towards the big braking zone i'm gonna go fully to the left no messing about here look spongy though round the outside i'm gonna try and lunge it back up the inside almighty dive bomb of the millennium but it performs the old switcheroo crofty goes wild in the commentary box and i'm back down to second with barely a sector left maybe four corners remaining in the race and so i'm running out of time here i spent probably 75 percent maybe more of this race in first however at the crucial moment i'm no longer in first we have one real opportunity to go for this i'm going to force him to the inside and you know what i'm going to absolutely go for this late on the brakes really judge this one to perfection over the apex i'm going to run him quite wide mid apex mid corner to cut off his exit and i'm worried about my exit speed here because i did not get a good entry line the italian is going to come back at me here but thankfully after all these trials and trepidations it is eventually going to be a first place i did it 
Oh my god, I am so relieved. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.